Okay, hey, I've got top of the hour. Welcome everybody um, to our next episode of our 20 for 20 webinar. I believe we're on, uh, this is number seven, might be six, and uh, want to uh, welcome all of you. We don't have a huge group today. So what I wanna do first is I am going to unmute everybody, um, but go ahead and I want you to manually mute yourselves and then unmute as you have a question or if you want to engage in the conversation. Since it is a relatively smaller group today, I'd like to open it up to a little more informal conversation. So if your mic is on, I'm about to unmute you. Um, so then you just go ahead and manually mute yourself. Here we go. And I'm hoping it works. Unmute all. Got to do it individually. Okay, thanks GoToMeeting. Okay, so Dennis, you're green. Kervin, you, if you don't have a if you don't have a um, microphone, just let me know. It's okay, guys. If you don't have a microphone, okay. So Joy, I just I just muted you or unmuted you. So go ahead and mute yourself. So Joy, Dennis, if your mics if you have a mic, go ahead and unmute yourself. Or I'm sorry, mute yourself. Oop, looks like I want the mute. Okay, well we've got people coming joining on right now. It looks like it's getting a little a little more people coming on board, but that's fine. So guys, today today's topic is how should fire departments measure success? And I would also like to um, mention that this is going to be not just how but why. And so what I'm going to share with you is. Uh, uh, some presentations I've done um, that kind of tie it all together, and then I'd like to entertain some questions. Um, before we get started, as we always do, I'm going to do a couple questions here in our polls. I see a lot of familiar names. Welcome to uh, Kervin. I've seen you on before. And of course, uh, Todd. Yeah, so got, glad to have you guys back. Todd uh, out in uh, nice and warm Alaska this, this afternoon or this morning. All right, first question take a look up. So what type of department do you guys work for? Career volunteer combo of federal DOD. Okay. All right. Oh, good. Everybody's looking. Look up at your screen if you're multitasking. All right. I'm going to close the poll here in five, four, three, two, and one. Thanks for voting, everybody. Here's our results. All right. Nice, nice, uh, Nice mix of uh, different departments with us today. All right, got two more for you. And then are you a current ER customer or are you interested in becoming an ER customer? And closing on one, two, three. Great, everybody is a customer today, fantastic. So I don't need to go into all of our system stuff and give you a background on who we are because you guys know who we are. All right, here's one that's unique for today's, uh, today's topic. So what is the number, I should say, what is the number one data challenge your organization faces? Is it quality data going in, making data an organizational value, not knowing what to collect, not understanding national standards, or, do you, or is it just hardware and software issues that you're struggling with? Now, I know you could have more than one of these. In fact, most of you probably do. But as you look at this, what is your number one pain point, the biggest challenge for being able to not only collect data, but also being able to tell your story with information about that data? Think it over for a couple seconds. Let me know what you think. And then maybe as we're going through this, as you think of your answer, send via the questions a little explanation of what, why you answered this way. So if you answered why you have trouble with quality data going in, tell me in just, and if, it, if you need to enter more, make more entries into the questions because of the, the, the character limit, please do so because I'd very much like to have that as part of our conversation today. So just type that in. Um, think of your response here, then type that in and explain why you chose that. And, and uh, hopefully we can have a good conversation and not only both me, but also the participants can help you with some ideas. Okay, looks like we got everybody voting. 
And three, two, one, closing the poll. Look up if you haven't voted. Last chance. All right, let's look at this. This is interesting. Okay, so top two, quality data going in and then making data an organizational value. So that's a lot, quite a bit of what we're gonna talk about today. Not knowing what to collect, um, I'm gonna hopefully give you some, some insight on that. And then uh, especially those of you that said hardware or software issues, please type in an explanation, all of you, type in an explanation of why you picked what you picked on this one because I'd like to have that as part of our conversation later on in the presentation. Fantastic, thank you everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this and it's gonna be an abbreviated version of one I've done in the past because I wanna combine it with a couple other um, presentations here for you today so we can maximize our time and then knowing that it, we don't have a giant group with us, uh, please, if you feel like you, you're gonna would rather explain, if you have a microphone, rather explain a question that you have or or kind of a solution your department's doing, uh, just uh, shoot that off as a question and uh, I'll be sure to unmute your mic. So harnessing data as an organizational value. So I like this. Those of you that have heard of W. Edwards Deming, um, he was very, he was embraced by the Japanese um, when he kind of started the whole quality control, quality management and not quality control, but quality management and the lean manufacturing that a lot of the Japanese industry has ad adopted um, many, uh, many years ago. But I like this quote, and God we trust all others bring data. And that's probably a lot of when you have to report back to your decision makers, those that control your purse strings. Everyone loves firefighters, it's true. But they're not just gonna be giving us, giving us things, we need to justify why. And if you're in a municipality environment where you have to compete in the general fund with law enforcement, libraries, parks and rec, you know how challenging that can be. And you gotta bring your A game to the data table when you're convincing town council members, city council members, fire district boards, um, why you need that new fire truck or why you need three more personnel, full-time equivalent personnel to staff your vehicles. That's me. Um, You've seen me before on these presentations, uh, 22 years in the fire service out of Southern Arizona. I am currently a, the business development analyst for emergency reporting, but you can see some of my other roles there um, below. Um, I last served as professional service project manager and I still work with a lot of key accounts and serve as our subject matter expert for our sales team. Okay, so again, we will talk a little bit about like key data elements, but I want you to kind of do a little introspection today um, and a little uh, uh, survey, kind of an internal survey of what your department is doing when it comes to data. And these are the things we're gonna talk about. So does your organization value data as much as your community values your fire rescue medical services department? You're, you know, we sometimes take it for granted, but we're pillars of our community. Um, you know, look at the commercials last year or yesterday in the Super Bowl, the one with Budweiser and Typical American. What's the first Typical American they showed? A firefighter um, and his strength in putting out, you know, for uh, a wildland fire. So we're definitely revered, um, but do we value internally data like our community values us? We're talk about the fire data triangle, the phases of fire service data, telling your story and it's that classic if it's not in your data it didn't happen if, as a medic I was always taught if you didn't write it down it didn't happen the why is huge good stuff going in equals good stuff going out and then creating and keeping a culture of trust these things don't happen overnight um, they evolve and they change cult they change change usually incrementally within an organization but you you should be able to measure and look back say a year from now and see changes you may have done within your organization and there it is, introspection from one of uh, fire service leaders, Dennis Compton. Every presentation I've been to, he always brings up introspection. And that is that, that self-reflection, that almost peaceful, quiet analysis of not only just who you are and what you're doing, but also at the organizational level. Not always easy, um, especially if you do it in a written or in a conversational format with other members and leaders of the organization. But if you're honest with yourself, it usually leads to improvement within both personally, professionally, and organizationally. All right, so you may, you may have heard this before, but um, 
we like to think about the fire data triangle. We're, we're real comfortable with the fire triangle, the classic um, heat, fuel, oxygen, of course, the chemical chain reaction, um, a simplistic look at what, you know, how fire exists, but let's take it to data. So you have three key elements, hardware, software, and liveware. And then we've got the phases of fire service data. And again, we've got phases of fire growth and fire um, extinguishment ultimately. And in this case, we've got, think of, think of those terms. We know all of these terms, ignition, incipient, growth, fully developed. Then there's that inevitable decay. Then you hope you have a, re this is the one time you do want to rekindle. And then you get back into that incipient phase and just keep that data, um, that data going and uh, make it to continue to make it part of your organizational um, core value. Okay, we're going to go through these. Um, first one is ignitions. Let's light this candle, right? All right, so let's take a look here. Ask yourself some of these questions. Is paper records still being used? Now you're all emergency reporting customers, so thankfully you are using an excellent RMS, uh, but there's there's no such thing as a, a paper-free fire department. I have yet to see one. It's all going to it's always going to be part of our organization. But there are elements that can minimize or eliminate paper that will streamline the collection of data as well as the dissemination of information from it. Great case in point: rig checks. All right. So my department, as an example, paper rig paper rig check forms, three ring binder. Put it once the week's done. You know, there are check marks, discrepancies noted, grease marks, oil stains, coffee stains, and then they go into a filing cabinet. Okay, we had a ladder truck failure in our department uh, years ago, and one of the things they asked for were all of our records. They saw them, and it cast quite a bit of doubt into the quality of what we were doing with our trucks. Now, our team, our engineers, were doing a great job checking and maintaining the vehicles but it didn't look like it on paper because you get a call, forget to finish the form, inconsistencies in the form, lost forms. So using it um, electronically and then also making it very easy to use, say via a smartphone, which, and, and again, I'll plug our rig checks, but um, our rig checks do a great job of that so that it's pretty pain-free, even for the non-tech savvy members of your organization to get that part of the job done. And then they know why they're doing it because they'll see reports. How much is being spent on fuel, on repair costs? How often is a vehicle out of service? You should be able to, as an organ, and you're all ER customers, so the answer is yes when I ask this, is if I were to come to your organization and say, hey, Todd, up in, uh, up in Alaska, how many minutes, how many days, how many hours was your engine one, for example, out of service this year? If you're using the system, you'll be able to pull a report in two seconds and be able to deliver that to me. Did you have an annual pump test over the past 10 years of this vehicle's life? The answer is yes, you do, or unless you did, especially if you've documented it in our maintenance module. So all of those things uh, help contribute to better assessment and management of the overall organization. Decision makers, they're gonna ask tough questions. And then formal or informal leaders say, we need to do better for our fighter, for firefighters, for our budget and our community. So I, I love this right here, this informal leader, because I just finished spending time at the Lower Marion Fire Department in Pennsylvania. And the chief is fantastic. He's clearly a formal leader and respected as well. So one would argue he's not just um, positional, um, but he's also, um, organizational as well without the official title. But he also has some key firefighters, yes, firefighters, not officers, that are amazing when it comes to what they ask about and what they wanna do with data in, in their department. And what does this chief do? He trusts them and lets them run with it. And so that's an, they're informal leaders, not rank-based, uh, but yet they're trusted and allowed to help the overall organization. So that's something to consider and something I've seen that is sometimes quite a challenge in an organization. I'll let you take a look at this. And this is just something from, from our system, but a quote from uh, Mike Brewbreaker um, in Tennessee. And just kind of a kind of an example of how an agency has uh, gone to the next level. All 
Okay, introspection. And again, I'm going to, uh, all the participants, you guys, I am going to email you a PDF of these presentations so you can review them. I know there's some text, quite a bit of text here. Um, and then here, let me ask you this, and then put, just put this in the responses you, if you were asking a question. Down here at the bottom, these last two, are we doing all we can to keep our most important asset, our people safe? And then thinking of your own organization, and I've got eight of you with us right now, so I'll be expecting eight responses. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being amazing, one being, yeah, we're doing nothing. Where do you rate on data collection, analysis, and dissemination? So I don't have it as a poll question, but please put it in. I'm not gonna put anybody on the spot. I'm just personally curious to see how would you rate your organization? One to 10. And I'll just kind of shoot the numbers off without saying names. All right, I got one. Use, use your GoToMeeting control panel. One to 10. 10 is amazing. One, pretty darn mediocre, if not nearly non-existent. How would you rate your organization on data collection, analysis, and dissemination? Multitaskers, take a look up at your screen. All right, so we've got an eight, five, a couple threes, a couple fives actually, and a, and a four. Okay, so you guys, I think what I'm hearing is an honest assessment here um, that there's room for improvement. And let me go back now, I'm retired now, let's see, holy cow, almost, it'll be seven years in September. But I can tell you my department, when I was on, and again, I'm sure they've improved, I would rate, rate our department probably about a six, maybe a seven. Um, there were always opportunities for improvement, um, but I think a solid six. That's not a diss, it's just, it's just reality. When you look at what does a 10 look like, right? RMS is killing it. They've got a CAD interface. Um, they document all their training electronically. Everybody knows when their certifications are coming up. Those kind of things start creeping you up towards a 10. So, hey, thanks for, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. And like I said, we've got one eight. So good job. We've got two fives, two threes, and a four. So very cool. All right, next up. So remember, we're on these phases of the fire service data incipient. Do the troops know why? So Chief Brunacini, that fire data triangle, comes from some work I did with, or I should say, with <laughs> the master, uh, Chief Brunacini, when he came out and did our uh, 2017 National Training Academy in Bellingham, Washington. And that's how we came up with the hardware, software, and liveware. Training for good stuff in. So if, if you just go top to bottom here, those are the key takeaways on this slide. Do the troops know why they're doing it? Or are they just like, oh, more data, more work. I didn't join this to be a data manager. Why are you making me do this? And then do you train for the good stuff in? Do you show them the results of putting good information into an RMS? And from a survey NFPA did, you can see, surprisingly, 300 out of about 500-ish, not quite 500 responses analyzed department fire department data. But look at 127 don't. And... Just because, and I can tell you, you guys are in the blue here because you're in today's webinar and you're using our system. All right, this is directly from his presentation. So this is this is his handwriting, and I loved his I loved his entire presentation. And uh, thankfully, he's um, we've lost him, but uh, back in he said, please use this as you as you see fit. And he's always was that sharing personality with any of the of the information that he put together. One of the things here, and again, knowing that we've got a couple other uh, things I wanna go over with you today, just kind of look at some of these questions here. And this is that introspection component. There's an EFO paper, I've got a link to it. Um, it'll be in your PDF, but um, Jeremy Schaffner from Montgomery, County Fire and Rescue Service. If you ever have a chance on these on, to look at EFO papers at the, at the United States Fire Administration um, website, there's some good ones there. And 
This one was particularly interesting because of the quality of ENFERS data. I can't begin to tell you how there is a relative lack of ENFERS knowledge out in the fire service. Now, ENFERS is, needs to catch up in some areas as far as what they're collecting, but it still amazes me that this, you know, we've been on ENFERS 5 for quite some time now, how there still isn't a focus on getting the best data and responding correctly and doing an incident report. And that always gives us an opportunity to, that always gives up us an opportunity to improve and do more uh, for our organization um, to get better data in, especially as it pertains to incident documentation. And then I just refer back to one of our great uh, great customers in uh, Alabama, Tuscaloosa. They had a heck of a plan um, when they began to, in this case, implement emergency reporting. And if that is an indication of how they do training with other things in their department, I can see why they're such a first-rate department. Now we're in the growth. Now we're cooking with gas. So again, our service data, we started out ignition, fire started to you know get a little bit bigger and now um, we're growing substantially. So maybe you'll start with just, maybe you wanna just do better with ENFERS incident reporting. Now it's time to upgrade to, okay, maintenance, that example I gave you, or training, or hydrants, okay? There's always new ways to tell your story. How many of you have an annual report? Again, I'm working with my, uh, my customer in Pennsylvania. They have an incredible annual report. What do they use that for? For the decision makers who control the purse strings and to communicate to the community um, what they've done. Not just great great visuals, great story, but also backed up with, with statistics and data. Does data become part of your strategic planning and budgeting? And then I always like getting buy-in from the bottom to the top usually not too hard to get buy-in at the top because those are the ones managing it. As you work with, with data, the probationary firefighter might have very little percentage of his daily workload that revolves around data management. But as you move up the ranks, and those of you that are officers or chiefs can attest to this, the vast majority of your time is spent managing data. So you go from maybe, you know, one to 5% as a proba probationary firefighter to push in 90% as a chief officer. So uh, again, the, the buy-in the buy at the top is usually not hard. It's getting that buy-in at the bottom so that you're successful because they're the ones doing the work, putting the data in. Here's some, a couple examples. There they are, 2018's uh, annual report, and then the Mar uh, United States Marine Corps, who we, we, who we have the honor to serve um, worldwide. They have an incredible annual report. So where are you excelling? You know right away, especially those of you that are three, fours, and fives, where you need to improve as far as data management. So think of it as your ISO score, that, that score I gave you, but instead of the lower number being, being the best, the higher number is best, right? So if you're a three or four, if we were to regroup next year, the 10 of us that are together right now, would that number, of, would that number improve? Do you have a plan to improve that number? All right, it doesn't just happen, it has to be intentional. If you're going for improving your ISO score or accreditation, you're gonna go from a three or four, as far as, not ISO, but a three or four in the quality of your data collection and management right now, easily to a five or six. It takes at least that to be successful in going for an improved ISO score or for going to accreditation. And one would argue that you probably need to be an eight or nine to go for accreditation as far as quality of data management within your organization, it's that intense. All right, now we're fully developed. Decision-making is consistently based on data. The grants are being awarded because of the quality of your data, whether the grant is local, state or federal. ISO, PPC score improves. Now you're starting to think, man, maybe we should go for accreditation. I like this, I highlighted it, because in the end of the day, numbers, data, scores, accreditation are wonderful, but are your firefighters healthier, more well, and more safe, and you can prove it? Are you improving your response times and service to the community? And then secession planning. So. Those data, those, data, those data gurus in the organization, are they going to be moving up? Are they gonna be moving on? Hopefully not, but do you have a plan in place to make sure that that uh, 
institutional knowledge is passed on. This was, <laughs> I love this quote. If we have data, let's look at data. If all we have are opinions, let's go with mine. We all have chiefs like that, right? So if you don't have the data, you're gonna go with somebody's opinion and it's usually the strongest voice, the loudest voice, the most persuasive voice in the room, right or wrong. But it's hard to refute the hard cold numbers sometimes. And some introspect introspective questions. Uh, we have an example, Thomasville, Georgia. They, they remarkably reduced their fire calls uh, over a year over year basis um, and they attributed to how they were collecting and using that data to improve and reduce their community risk. And again, am I grooming my data ninja replacements? Because you know you have them. You're, you are some of them. Who's your replacement? You guys are your organization's data ninjas and who are you mentoring to be as good as you someday? All right, now that the inevitable, and this is analogous to our careers, our life, pretty much everything. Complacency kicks in, fire triangle breaks down, we're not staying current, and then we be, then this is bad, an over-dependency on data. So then it's all about the numbers and not about the people. There's a book, um, I've just kind of started going over it, but it's called The Fires, and back in the 70s, New York was burning down, and it, they were all just following data. And so, again, without getting into all of the details here just for a time, but if you look at it, do a Google search or Amazon search, um, it is most interesting and it is on my bookshelf to continue reading. I, I got it, started it, and of course life takes over, but it's uh, quite fascinating when you rely exclusively on just crunching numbers to make decisions. Key point. So, does it sound counterintuitive of what we've been talking about? You want to use the data to help you make wise decisions, but it's just one core element of making that decision. And sometimes hunches, sometimes um, things that go on in our organization um, and in our communities help drive that decision as well. And so you've got to look at the whole picture. And I think that is the takeaway from what took place in New York in the 70s. So these are some key elements when you're looking at data. And again, are you making decisions on based on good data or questionable data like what was in uh, New York? Is the data complete? Is it accurate? Consistent, valid, available, and timely. Are we making decisions based on five-year-old data? Or are we making it based on last year's data? And again, these are some introspective questions to ask yourself. All right, now we're rekindling it. We're bringing back that love and feeling to the whole uh, data side of our organization. Sometimes you regroup, just like you're on an incident, you've got an incident action plan going, but it's not going to plan. You take a second, you stop, you get the you get your um, incident incident commander, his operational and, and sector leaders uh, into the command van, and you say, okay, this isn't working. What do we need to do differently? And at the end, data drives the fire service, but it's us in the driver's seat. On the rekindle, here's some introspective questions to look at. We have a customer, they went from an, a PPC of six to a four. So you don't have to go down to a class one, you work your way there. But they went from a six to a four in one year and they attributed it to the quality of data they were collecting that they were not collecting previously. Who wins with this? The community, insurance rates go down, firefighters are safer. And then from it, not only they can see where they're at, they can see where they're going. And again, I go back to, can they, do, do the troops understand the value of data in the organization? And do they get the whys behind it? Why am I entering the daily log entry? Why am I doing daily log entries for blood pressure checks? Why am I doing it for car seat checks? Uh, why do we have to capture um, all of our training? That one's not so hard. But again, sometimes our people are like our kids when they were young. They want to know, they ask you why and they, 
they won't settle for just the answer just because this is what we're doing. All right, this is kind of my bottom up theory. Take a look at that. Work your way from blue at the bottom to the top orange. So is good data going in? Does the live wire, or the troops know, are they trained? Do they know how to use, in your case, everybody, emergency reporting to get the data in? Do they understand the whys behind it? Do you have good software, which you do, but how's your hardware? A couple of you had mentioned that you, you struggle with um, either software or hardware or the technology. Once that analysis of the data going in, you can get good information out that's trusted, communicated, and then is it understood? So we can put together, we've got some great reports in our system. Take a look when you get a chance at report number 1420, it tells a really great story. But ask yourself, how many people in the community, civilians, lay people, if you were to throw that in your annual report, would they be able to interpret it? Some would, no doubt about it but are they gonna have to really think and figure it out because it's one of those reports? Or is there a way you can tell the story a little better based on that report? So check out report 1420. It shows your peak call volume by day and by hour. And then effective decision-making. So the end, you've got safe, well-funded fire departments. You've got the three Ms. What are the three Ms? Money, manning, and machines. And then, that leads to happy chiefs, hopefully. Here's a quick recap. So we, we went over the fire data triangle, liveware, software, hardware, the phases of the fire service data, um, again, analogous to the phases of fire, how you tell your story, understanding the why, knowing that good stuff going in, which you rely on the people that are in doing the job day in and day out allows you that are managing the organization to get good stuff out and then sharing that sharing that knowledge and ultimately gaining power and trust. So how hot does your fire burn in your organization? Where would you say your organization is currently at? So go ahead and you know what? Go ahead and respond. Take a look at those those items there and in the question, go ahead and respond. Where would you say your organization at is at right now? in the phases of fire service data. Are you just starting out ignition where you're kind of getting some inertia going here? Are you in the growth phase where you've established and just moving forward? Would you consider yourselves fully developed or have you gotten there and then now that your things are kind of getting complacent and, or are you like in the rekindle mode? All right, how about half of you responded? So we got three growths, one and two, about two incipients, one maybe a little bit in the ignition. Right on. Uh, I like this one from Michael. Uh, somewhere between incipient and growth, and we need to spread that to the rest of the department. Great. All right, so I would be willing to bet that I would, could, be, could move all of you up just slightly in this scale based on your responses. Um, and then this is where we like to be in this fully developed range. And so it's, it's awesome to be able to strive for that. And then what, are the, what defines when you're at the fully developed phase? You, you probably know it maybe even just viscerally what that means, but have you written it down? So think about that. What will take you to that fully developed and write some of those things down? What would you consider as an organization that you are a fully developed, um, data-driven organization? So again, each organization, their answer will be different. All right, so thank you for that one. Our time is looking good. I wanna go to our next one. And before I do that, does anyone have any questions? And like I said, you'll all get PDFs of this, uh, uh, this presentation. All right, so the next one is I'm gonna show you some examples. So this will answer, these are, these are departments that I would consider. Now, here's another interesting thing. These I'm gonna consider them fully involved, okay? However, that will tell you that there are a good chunk of our data uh, management that's fully involved, but then there are others that are laggard. So even when you consider yourself fully involved, there's probably some that are still in the growth phase. So let's take a look at this. We'll run through this one pretty quickly. 
And Byron, I do. I have examples of annual reports. So, so how do you guys all feel that um, when I wrap this up today, I'll send you a Dropbox link with the PDFs to these presentations. And I will also share, because some of them are big files, I will share and I've gotten permission from each of these departments because you're going to see some of these coming up here in a second. Uh, I will send you um, some, some uh, what I consider some best practice examples of annual reports. So if you guys are cool with that, I'll just share your Dropbox link uh, later on today with everybody. Okay, so close this one. All right, we're gonna talk about some success stories. So everything I just mentioned before, it's gonna kind of come together here in a full picture. And we'll switch this to presentation mode. Okay, here we go. Again, you guys probably know, um, he's my hero, but one of his, his uh, The World According to Bruno, never stop learning from everyone. And I learn every day something either about our system or working with our customers. And so I try to keep that, uh, keep myself humble and not beat myself up that I should know this or know that because it's the whole point of connecting with people. They're going to share something with you and you're going to share something with them. All right. So we're not going to deep, we're not going to go into all of the details of these examples, but there's some background for each of these departments. I'm going to point out to you one station, two shifts, not a big department, 30 people. Okay, this is Rock Island Arsenal. They're located in the Mississippi River, in the middle of the Mississippi River, literally on an island between Illinois and Iowa. And they build, well, they build munitions and, and other things here, but they protect the entire island. And then they do mutual aid off of the island. Training. So they, since switching to ER five years ago, they've been able to continually improve their data capturing capabilities. They track each individual's completion status of monthly training and they've improved to 90 percent of personnel completing monthly training requirements how are they doing it jprs now i know nfpa calls jprs more like task sheets we look at it as a training performance requirement if you have not used this part of our system it allows you to bundle classes built from templates to determine the completion rate for mandatory training on a time-based period, whether it's monthly training, quarterly, or annual training. It's a wonderful tool. If you haven't used it, um, we have knowledge-based articles and, and training videos to show you how to get it all going, but it's a terrific tool and there's a particularly good report. Let's see if we have it in here. There it is. It reports 1688. And I had, whoops, that's right, I can't scroll on that because it's a PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> But this is an example of that report, and you can see between, in July, that's JPR, they had to complete the NFPA 1410-based reverse supply to sprinkler, and you can see who's completed it and who hasn't. Now, our system, they only had to complete one class, but Robert here is an overachiever, or he worked overtime shifts and did it multiple times. As long as he did it once, he got the one-for-one one credit. Okay, the Mount Dora. These guys, another amazing department, not a big department. You guys aren't all big departments. 43 people, 4,600 uh, call volume a year. Not a gigantic budget, but respectable. Okay. Accreditation. Okay. Now, we could do a whole webinar and probably will on some accreditation issues, but this is something that they're managing using our OVAP scoring and our vision product in the occupancy module by breaking it down in two categories within NFPA, no, within SIPSI, sorry, got NFPA on the brain today. Um, documentation of area characteristics and an all hazard risk assessment and response strategy. They got to assess by zones. And so now they've got the OVAP scoring, property contents lost, incident type breakdown by zone, and then critical infrastructure. And they put this together using data in our system into a comprehensive report to help them with their accreditation process. And uh, Rich Lower out there, Got to give him props. This guy's young, up and coming. Um, he has got it down uh, and knows what he's doing, both with our system and what's expected for accreditation. And he's got a plan to go with it. Thomas Phil Fire, I mentioned them earlier. So a little bit bigger, okay? 43 career personnel, two stations, not much bigger. So now they're tracking their fires. There's a heat map straight from ER. There's a map with their emergency response zones. 
um, polygoned out, probably by their GIS department, where those fires are happening. So heat versus pin. So let's look at that. 2014, 32 fires, 20 in 2017. And they have data to back it up that their community risk reduction effort significantly contributed to that. And you can see they went out and scored buildings. So you can see here, these the orange and red, those of you that use our vision product, you know that oranges and reds are higher risk structures. And so these have been scored higher. So what do they do? Focus some prevention ed education efforts in this area. Maybe you have to do more commercial inspections here. Maybe they have to go do fire extinguisher classes. Okay, using the data to make the community safer. Then they've got hydrants, uploading uh, hydrants into the system. And then, so they, this is directly from what they earned using community risk reduction. And this is ISO, PPE or PP, their PPC, PPE, PPC. So you've got the maximum credit available, and these are extra credit. This is bonus, okay, on top of the, the other ISO categories. And because of the work they've done, they nearly, they maxed out their credit for public fire safety education. They maxed out their fire investigations program. They almost maxed out prevention and code enforcement. They just got 5.28 more points towards their ISO score above and beyond what they got for the other categories. Another great success story. Ah, the Marine Corps, 14 across the world, and I have been blessed to visit many of them. Now we're talking big here. Now, not each base is big, usually one station on each base, but taken in aggregate, 50 fire stations around the world. They're running about 25,000 calls a year, okay? help secure funding from their headquarters and got a little fancy on that transition. And then they're telling their story in their annual report. And uh, Chief Pritchard has been uh, gracious enough to share the electronic version of this with me. And I'll be sharing those with you and you're gonna see terrific professional reports. So they've got the good data going in, they've got the right people managing it, analyzing it, and then they get, now they have the good fortune of a graphic designer that put together an extremely professional, almost magazine quality based, not almost, definitely magazine quality based annual report. But it doesn't take a graphic designer to do the, some of the things that they've done if you've got the in-house talent that can work and do this for you. A lot to look at here, but in a nutshell, this is from the Department of Defense instruction manual on their requirements for their standards of cover response times. So you, this looks familiar, right? They have to meet first arriving company, seven minutes, 90% of the time, one company with four people. And then you can see how it breaks down for their other responses. All right, so blew, went, blew through that. went through that pretty quickly. This was part of that presentation. Um, and that's all my contact info. So if you guys wanna grab a screenshot of that, yeah, I know you probably know how to get a hold of me just via my email, which is fine. Uh, but that was, um, a condensed version of a much longer presentation. And then last but not least, what I'd like to go over is this. One example, very specific as it pertains to a, an NFPA topic, okay? And so in this case, this is safety analytics. Now, I want you to see when, and what I'm doing here is not just making the case for safety analytics. I want to help you make the case organizationally for improving your data. So think of this as a maybe a template to help improve and communicate how your organization can take it from the growth to incipient or from you know, you rated a three or four to a five next year. So um, this was an ask by some of our customers on, we want this, but we've got to justify why we need it. And so instead of just thinking safety analytics, how would you build something like this for improving data management, making the case for improving entering ENFERS reports and then doing examples. 
So again, keeping with the theme from uh, the probably would I would argue is one of our finest chiefs ever, the mission statement of Phoenix Fire. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some examples here. I'm gonna give you this single example, but I'm gonna inject something like, how do we improve our ENFERS incident reporting? So what is ENFERS? Okay, this is what is safety analytics. All right, so what is ENFERS? And then you can cite it, okay? Just as I've cited here. And safety analytics here is data visualization for safety related data in your ER account. High level, maybe a screenshot from the ENFERS complete reference guide or from our incident reporting. This happens to be the pump panel for safety analytics. And then I go through each gauge. And so you could go through the pages within an incident report on where you're strong in your organization, where you need to improve. Now let's go back to some of the other NFPA standards, 1401, training records. Again, you could put together something that helps make your case that isn't just, you know, Andrews or Brian's or Byron's or Curvin's idea. It's, yeah, it may be your idea, but it's backed up with the standards and the national expectations of a fire service organization, and you can cite those. So again, we'll go through here, the different gauges why, you're answering questions, okay? Facilities, again, I'm using this as an example because when you're going to do this, you, you know, it's always hard when you're doing data to minimize the amount of text or numbers in a presentation. And so keep it high level and have your facts, you know, close to you, put a note sheet together that couples that kind of uh, backs this up and goes with the presentation itself. But it lets your audience see what you're talking about and keeps the text to a minimum and keeps it, keeps it simple. And again, every time you show something, every side you go to is gonna bolster your case. My goal is to get you to, to uh, add safety analytics to your ER account. And again, I'll share this with you, but again, good data going in and no better example in our system than safety analytics that the, the reliability and the quality and the validity of your data going in will give you good information out in the form of these gauges to let you know the state of your department as it pertains to NFPA 1500. So again, you can think of this, again, we're think, looking at this twofold. One, safety analytics and what we talked about today, how you put good data in throughout all the, most of the modules in the system feed this, those 11 gauges. The, if you know that the data the troops are putting in, truck checks are getting done, annual, pump tests are getting done, people that are fit for duty are listed as fully fit for duty, you can go to that data visualization tool and trust it. Otherwise, if you are kind of sketchy on how you feel, what's been your, which in your ER account, you might go to safety analytics and go, man, this isn't right. I know we're better than this, or I know we're not as good as this. It's showing 100% and we're not at 100%. We've got some people that are on light duty, you know, and that's okay. No, don't dread the red on these things. Everybody freaks out in the fire service. We love our red fire trucks, but anything else that's red is like someone's gonna get in trouble. No, it just means you need to improve. No department I've gone to is green in every one of these, not one. Equipment gauge, and I'm not gonna give you a, a, you know, a presentation on what all these do, but I just wanna show you, and we've got training, being able to track training, apparatus, PPE, that's a good one. The PPE gauge is pretty awesome. Emergency ops, the master that takes a look at all 10 of those gauges into one single compound gauge. And if you don't think the things that we do are deadly serious, then you need to wake up to that and pay attention. And you have to, you have to watch and hear him say that. It's just great. All right, and then you'll sum it up. What is safety analytics in this case? But think of that as your, you know, almost this is a template template deck to help you make your case on, say, you know right now, God, we need to do better in our training records, or we've got to do better in ENFRA's um, documentation, or why aren't we doing things in our daily log? You know, there are an incredible number of reports you can pull from the daily log to demonstrate the productivity of your organization. All right, we are doing great. Uh, 
I've got 10 minutes left. Now I'm not going to hold you hostage, but I very much would like to answer any questions that you have. Um, before I do, one, thank you for taking those poll questions. Thank you for responding on your one to 10 rating of your organization, as well as where you stand as an organization on the, the uh, phases of fire service data. And then lastly, um, uh, I will be sending you uh, later today a link to some documents that I think will serve you well um, in your organization. Feel free to reach out to me via my email at tom, T-O-M, at emergencyreporting.com. Uh, it'll be coming. And then Michael does have a question. Can ER integrate with Fire Rescue One Academy? So we are hoping to. At the moment, we do not, but we are hoping to. We would very much like to have an integration with them. Uh, they're part of Lexapol now, or Lexapol is about part of them. And uh, we would very much like to integrate with them. I think that is a tremendous opportunity. Any other questions? All right, I have one last thing I'd like to share with you. And we're gonna go here and then we'll wrap it up for today. Two things actually. Number one, if you are interested, and I'll send this um, as a link, we have more webinars coming up. I'm gonna send you the link via chat. So I wanna show you the schedule, so if you're available, uh, February, holy smokes, that's coming up this week. We're doing two this week? Oh boy, I better get going. Um, no, we had to postpone this one because I was on site last week, so that makes sense. So stay with me, come Thursday, we're gonna talk about NFP 1300 and community risk reduction. Um, here it comes in chat. This is the main page. Bookmark this, click on it, and you can register. And then we've got one basically one week for the next uh, next couple weeks. And we're all trying to base them on NFPA uh, standards uh, going through March. And then the last thing that you may be aware of, you may not be, but I wanna share it with you, is this. And please let me know, because I know we got a couple broken links that we need, need to fix on this. Um, so I'll be getting um, with the team to correct it. But most of them, the vast majority of them are good. But in our knowledge base, we now have learning plans. So I'm telling you today about data, improving overall data in your organization. You've got to know how to use the tools at your disposal. One of those tools is ER. So we've got these learning plans. I'm going to send you this link. There's 32 of them. And please, if you notice errors or missing broken links, we've got a couple of them in the early ones here, like one or two um, uh, are broken. But if you click into any of these, you can download them and use them internally as a way to document learning the system. So if I'm gonna be an administrator in ER, I'd very much like to learn how to use the system. So I can say I'm in progress and I'm gonna click on configuring notifications. I click on it and it's gonna take me to the knowledge base article that pertains to it. What we did here, um, we chose to put this together and uh, I take our knowledge base articles and videos and put them into, a kind, it's not a full blown lesson plan in the truest sense. It is a uh, learning plan that allows you to self-study emergency reporting based on the report resources available, but puts them together in a logical, usable format to where you not have to click it around back and forth searching for the different knowledge base articles and videos. So that's the link I sent you as well. And um, again, as you see, as you use them, if you find anything, is any issues with them, just let me know directly at my email address and we'll get them promptly corrected. It's meant to be used electronically, so you can check progress. You just could go in and save as, put your last name to it, and then you can see where you're, where you're at with any of these um, parts of the lesson plan or learning plan. All right, with that, we'll call it a wrap for today. Uh, I'll stick around for just a few more seconds to see if anyone has any questions. And yep, you bet, Todd, we'll get you those items in the Dropbox. And Byron, you're very welcome, guys. Uh, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to join me today. And uh, we'll see you Thursday on our next one. Have a good week. Happy Monday, everybody.